Hey guys, it is Patrick. Before you get started with understanding debits and credits as well as how to do journal entries, I wanted you to know that if you go to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com, you're gonna find links to all eight lessons in this series. So if you get turned around or you don't know what the next lesson is or how to get to there, you can definitely go to my website, click on the next lesson, and it'll take you right back here to YouTube where you can view the entire lesson. Also, in the description section below, I've put a link to where you can purchase the notes for this series so that you can just sit back, learn more about debits and credits and doing your journal entries and you've got the notes right in front of you to follow along. So if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com to purchase those notes as well as see all the links for this next eight lessons in this Understanding Debits and Credits and Journal Entry series. Until then, let's get going with your lesson. All right, in the last few lessons, we've been talking about the expanded accounting equation. We talked about debits and credits. Now we're gonna bring them all together and understand the relationship of debits and credits, left or right, and the expanded accounting equation, dealer, and how they come together to help us understand how we actually use debits and credits from a journal entry standpoint. So let's get started here with understanding the relationship between debits and credits and the expanded accounting equation. So we know that at the core of understanding debits and credits is the impact of those terms on the expanded accounting equation and account analysis. So what I often say is, you know, right here you see is our expanded accounting equation dealer. And the way that debits and credits work is that debits and credits tells us what do we need to do to each account. And by its relationship in itself, each account is part of a component. So I can list all the accounts here and we could do it that way, or I can summarize and just go, here are all of the components, all of the accounts that are part of these components will follow this rule. So for instance, if I'm talking about cash, we're gonna follow the assets rule. If I talk about rent expense, we're gonna follow the rent expense rule. And when we say debits and credits, we're really just saying, what do we do to an account based on the economic events that have happened? So this is the key that I would use to report debits and credits into an account based on uh, the component that it is a part of. So on the left side, we've got debited, debits, expenses, and assets. And the rule here is that if an account is a dividend, expenses, or an asset, and it goes up, for instance, cash, cash, more cash in your pocket, that goes up, okay? So cash goes up, cash is an asset. If one of these three components go up, and by nature, they're accounts, then we are going to debit the associated account. So bringing it back, if you have more expenses, that means expense goes up. If expense goes up, we're going to debit the expense account. Asset, equipment. If we buy more equipment, the equipment account goes up because I have more equipment. Because I have more equipment and the uh, equipment account goes up, that equipment is part of the asset uh, component since it increases, we're going to debit the equipment account. What about credit? Well, credits, it, uh, credits for dividends, expenses, and assets occur when they decrease. So when a dividend expense or asset decreases, we are going to credit the associated account. For instance, if you use cash, you have less cash. So the, what we need cash to do is we need cash to come down. Well, cash is an asset. If the asset decreases according to this chart here, we're going to credit cash, okay? So if a dividend expense or asset increases, we're going to debit. If a dividend expense asset decreases, we're going to credit. Now, what about the other side? Well, a liability, owner's equity, and revenue does the opposite of the dividends, expenses, and assets. So if a liability, owner's equity, or revenue increases in nature, we are going to credit the associated account. So if this goes up, so if we take out more debt, 
our liabilities go up and because they go up, that means that we are going and well, because it goes up, our liabilities go up. If liabilities go up, it's a credit to the associated account. Now, if one of these three components go down in nature, we are going to debit the associated account. So we're gonna do the opposite of the left side of the equation. So that's how debits and credits work. It's not increase, decrease, it's not left or, uh, well, it's left or right, but it's not increase or decrease. It really comes down to, first of all, what accounts are you impacting? Is it cash? Is it equipment? Is it accounts payable? Is it dividends, revenues? What are you trying to impact? And then when you impact it based on this transaction, is that account supposed to go up or down? If it's supposed to go up, then we're gonna use the rule on the left side that it's a debit. If it's on the right side, it's a credit. And then if it goes down, well, if it's on the left side, we're going to credit. If it's on the right side, we're going to debit. So this becomes a key to using debits and credit. So what I tell students all the time is, first of all, figure out, do you have an economic event? When you have an economic event, then you gotta figure out what accounts is that economic event going to impact? When you find out how it's going to impact, then you gotta figure out, is it an asset liability, owner's equity, revenue, dividend, or expense? Once you figure that out, you come to this key and you go, okay, the impact of this account is that it's gonna go up, this account is an asset, Therefore, I'm going to debit the account. This economic event impacts revenues. I had more revenues, which is a great thing. So my revenues are going to increase. My sales revenue account is a part of the revenues account. This revenue is increasing because I have more uh, revenues. Therefore, I'm going to credit the sales revenue accounts. So that's how we use it. And uh, you're gonna get much practice on this in our seventh and eighth lesson. So if you're still a little bit wonky or you wanna know how this actually works, stay tuned to lesson seven and eight where I'm gonna actually show you how this works against journal entries. So that is a look at the relationship between debits and credits and the expanded accounting equation. Super important just to understand that you know that you have dealer, and on the left side of the equation, if it goes up, debit. If it goes down, credit. If it's on the right side of the equation and it goes up, credit. If it goes down, debit. That's all you really need to know. And then it's now about applying that rule or that key to scenarios that we have for you in sections in lesson seven and lesson eight. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking over here. And for more accounting content, make sure you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or clicking over there. And for the next lesson, just click right over here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.